So I was at a historic event. Uh, yes. Out in the field. I haven't done it in a very long time. with a lot of progressives and independents and people trying to fight for a better future. And we had a very special guest. Uh, very speak. special? I think the leading progressive candidate who is trying to fight for a better future and uh, really trying to get his name out there and win the Democratic nomination. That's right. You know him. I know him. It's time to feel the burn. Let's get Woo! that graphic up. Yes. There it is. Yeah, oh, there wow. Hey, Bernie hey, Sanders. Hey, Bernie's flashing I, out on that. Oh, socialism. I love <laughs> the fact that we have graphics now. I love the fact that we have um, the ability to do that. So It's very fun. So let's get started. So here's what happened at the event that I uh, covered at CTU. First, I also want to give a very special shout out to all of the fans that said hello to me at the uh, at the event. It was really awesome to see so many people saying that they love Hardlands Media. I mean, that is just awesome. I mean, what's not to love? I know. Really? We're, we're, I, mean, I mean, we're the best. So uh, Chicago teachers began voting Tuesday on whether uh, to strike over contract demands. And Democratic presidential candidate and US, United States Senator, Senator Bernie Sanders, uh, rallied with them to help spark and unify energy that had yet to surface in public view. Um, basically, uh, Sanders uh, said this, I think that the Chicago school board should be very nervous. Um, and he was basically saying this at the Chicago Teachers Union Center. Um, so uh, what we see is teachers standing up and fighting for justice. Uh, this rally was to boost the union's efforts in its uh, tries to uh, in its ability to try and persuade its members to vote in favor of a uh, work stoppage uh, to put added pressure on Mayor Lightfoot's uh, uh, ability to, to basically acknowledge that hey, look, we have a concerning problem here, and Mayor Lightfoot, please hear our concerns because you know let's face it, a lot of teachers are right now upset at the current situation that they are dealing with. And that whole room was packed up with more than a thousand people. There, I think it was like past max capacity. Because mm -hmm. there was a secondary room where even more people were filled Oh yeah, the yeah. overflow room, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was, there was an overflow room and I think there was also some space outside too. So the whole building was packed. There was audio equipment, there was uh, uh, TV screens everywhere. So no matter where you were at in the building, you were going to hear all the speakers and even Senator Bernie Sanders address the crowd. That's uh, amazing. And, you know, there was a lot, a lot of other people there, too, standing in solidarity with the Chicago Teachers Union and SEIU Local 73. Uh, for example, actor John Cusack was there. Oh, okay. um, people who we've also interviewed in the past, Alderman Carlos Ramirez Rosa of the 35th Ward, uh, Alderman Byron Segoe Lopez of the 25th Fifth Ward, um, Alderman Rosanna Rodriguez Sanchez of the 33rd Ward, and then there was also Alderman Jeanette Taylor of the 20th, and Alderman Susan Sadalowski uh, uh, Garza of the 10th Ward. And basically, they're all calling for uh, the, the, the strike to happen. Uh, the CTU three-day strike authorization, uh, authorization vote began Tuesday and will conclude Thursday. It needs about 75% of the teachers to vote in favor of a walkout. And it looks like it's going to go that way because there was a lot of energy in that room and a lot of anger towards the city of Chicago, previous mayor uh, administrations like uh, Mayor Daley, Mayor Rahm Emanuel, and now Lightfoot is taking a lot of the heat. But she did make a statement. Uh, well, we're always going to be prepared. We owe that to our students. But what our primary focus, both at the mayor's office and CPS, is on getting a deal done. That's where we're spending most of our time. And she said that she wasn't surprised that Senator Bernie Sanders was there uh, rallying the teachers uh, and the other union members there. But I'm again, it's it, it just goes to show you that Senator Bernie Sanders has the ability to rally a huge crowd. And secondly, I think this is time for the, for the mayor herself to really acknowledge that, hey, you got to hash out a deal and you need to meet up with all the teachers and their union leadership. Otherwise, uh, you're in for uh, for a long strike because they're not going to back down. Yeah. I don't want to get your comment. I don't think it's any surprise that Bernie Sanders is out uh, supporting teachers unions. I mean, he was uh, of the of the Democratic hopefuls for uh, the primary. I believe he was the only one who actually stood with the water protectors as well. Um, among all of uh, uh, among everybody that that is a hopeful right now. And I think Bernie Sanders is clearly the candidate who uh, speaks for workers, stands up for workers the most. We do have another story coming up in a little bit in regards to that. And I think that all of us can really start to get used to the fact that Bernie Sanders is going to be showing up to these rallies. I think that his one of his probably not one of his number one um 
Uh, Stump, you know, one of his number one reasons for running is really to help middle class workers. Yeah. And um, I think it's clear in his actions. And I think that that's what we need to be looking at with these Democratic hopefuls is what actions are they taking? How are they showing they're actually going to be standing on our side? Who can we trust? Why should we trust them? There's so much, dude, that's happened this week that has me like... I think really solidly placing myself in the Bernie camp finally, because I've been really wishy-washy about my own candidates. Yeah. And this is just another example of that. Well, you know, looking at Senator Bernie Sanders, look, look everyone, I mean, we ha all of us, even towards Senator Bernie Sanders, we all have to be very critical of all our candidates. Yes. Even if they're saying things that we like, there are times, look, they're human, where they can get things wrong, but we have to be critical and at the same time to acknowledge who has been consistent. All of you and us in this room right now, we have the ability to look up the voting record of all our political candidates and see where they stand on the issues. Who have they supported in the past? What uh, what issues have they been correct on in the past? And more importantly, uh, where, what are they doing right now at this 100%, very moment? One hundred percent, most importantly, and yeah. that's that's a that's largely where I stand. I'm I tend to be a really forgiving person. I'm, I'm generally looking yeah. at how people can actually grow and transform. So I'm, I'm totally okay with somebody's yeah. history Pe yeah. showing Pe something people change. People different change. because people have the ability to change. And I believe that. And when we look at the history of Bernie Sanders and we look at what he's doing now, but what he was doing 10, 20, 30, before 40 you and I were born years ago, you he's know? still, he was still fighting for the same causes and he's never backed down. And I really think that, um, I think that his actions now and his actions of the last four decades point yeah. to he's the one I think that we can trust the most. And I think he has the one, I think he has the ability not only to build a, a very strong and successful coalition, uh, not only amongst progressives and liberals and independents within the left or left kind of sphere or democratic socialists, but he also has the ability to reach across the aisle amongst conservative uh, voters, Republican voters, libertarians. I'm not saying that all of them are just going to vote in, in in favor of Bernie Sanders, but because let, let's say he gets the nomination and goes into general election. Well, in the election, there's the thing called the Electoral College, and he has what it takes to possibly bring in some red states to go blue. Maybe. I, I definitely and, agree and, with and, that. And the thing is, even if you're critical of Bernie Sanders, you have to acknowledge one thing. He is consistent with standing in solidarity mm -hmm. with all unions and working class families. I mean, that's what he does. He's always been there standing in solidarity and being there at CTU. Again, it was a wonderful moment. The enter the room was packed, and I, look, for for me, I'm the jury's still out for me in regards to looking at Lori Lightfoot. But if she can't handle this situation, she's going to have a lot of trouble in regards to the next few years of her t of her term as being mayor of the city of Chicago. Was because Lori, Lori Lightfoot was it at this? No, she, no, she, she was not. She was not there. Oh, okay. There was a lot of progressive a majority of the Democratic uh, Socialist aldermen who uh, won in the last 20 right. in, in, in the uh -huh. last municipal election cycle were there. Um, what but, was Lori Lightfoot's reason for not being there? Did, did they say? Um, what, did she have a mouthpiece there? Well, no. I, I, as far as I know, there was no representative of the mayor at that event. <laughs> um, this was this was a CTU event, and this was also maybe uh, to, to some extent too, mind you. This, this was a primarily a uh, Chicago Teachers Union SEI, uh, SEIU right. Local 73 event. They invited Senator Bernie Sanders to be there. He came, my, stopping in, in mid-campaign in, uh, you know, uh, in Iowa, yeah, just coming incredible. to the city of Chicago. Mm -hmm. I mean, our primary isn't until March, but he's there standing in solidarity with the teachers. And I, if there was a representative of Mayor Lightfoot there or if she was there, uh, they probably would have been booed right away because I think the teachers have had it up to here. The whole energy was, uh, the whole room was packed with energy and the willingness to strike and make their voices heard. And did you get the sense that the anger was coming mostly from a previous administration or are they still pretty pissed off about actions of the Lightfoot administration? It's, it's, it's everything. It's everything from the previous two mayor administrations. I mean, mind you, there was a long lasting legacy of Daley, mm -hmm. Rahm Emanuel's oh, yeah. eight mm -hmm. years as mayor. And then now looking at Lightfoot too. And I think Lightfoot, she has a chance to make this right. But the very fact that it has gone to this it should tell us one thing is that her office is being really reckless in regards to dealing with this, uh, the Chicago Teachers Union. Mind you, there's another strike that's happening, too, amongst the, the nurses over there at the Chicago Medical Center, uh, University of Chicago Medical Center. So there is a lot of things that the mayor is going to have to address. And.
and I think she's going to learn firsthand the power of unions and already being motivated by Bernie Sanders being there. CTU and SEIU mm -hmm. Local 73, they're not going anywhere and they're not going to apologize and they're going to continue to push forward. And I'm confident enough to say this. I would be surprised if they voted not to strike unless the mayor uh, comes up with a plan right now. Um, yeah. There's going to be a strike. Do we do we have any idea of when that strike might start? Thursday is the day of the final vote. Okay. And they okay. need 75 percent of memberships uh, to vote. And this was a big rally. And I think Bernie Sanders being there just gave enough people who probably were hesitant or waiting right. in wings enough energy to say, all right, let's do this. Because when unions stand up, when workers stand up, when the people stand up, they're going to make their vo they're going to make their presence known. And I think this is something I usually like to say to all our viewing audience here in the city of Chicago. If you are going to want to let the city council and this mayor know that we're not going anywhere, make your presence seen and heard. Remind them that you're not going anywhere. Myself and Kira, I mean, look, we're both uh, former members of Wolfpack, Illinois. And if we can get 20 people can get the Illinois State Senate and House to pass SJR 42, CTU, SEIU Local 73, you guys can do anything. You can make this city and this mayor realize that you have power. And, and at the end of the day, they're fighting for the children. They're fighting to making sure that all the kids in the city of Chicago get a quality education. And that is priority. Well, the, a quality education for Chicago, but also like economic growth mm -hmm. for Chicago when our teachers are actually being supported, when our students are actually being supported, less violence in neighborhoods in Chicago, when there are schools in neighborhoods that are flourishing. And then also just, you know, less economic stress for those people in our society that actually think about our future and help our future to flourish. You know, yeah. I, I think that one of the one of the biggest atrocities in America, and, and I, I don't know about the world, but in America is that our teachers get paid very little for one of the most important jobs mm -hmm. there is. Yeah. And um and and I think that this is really highlighting that. What um what were some of the teachers' demands? Do you remember any of them? Well, yeah, of, of, of course. course. I mean, I was there. I was hearing the whole crowd. Uh, crowds of I have one. to take notes for hours everything because my brain doesn't hold <laughs> everything so yeah one uh obviously uh First, having enough resources for the students, making sure the classroom sizes are a little bit smaller, not having 40 or 50 kids mm, in one mm -hmm. room, because how can one teacher handle that entire workload, even if it's from kindergarten all the way up to high school? Yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. I think in it's Girl Scouts, monumental... like you needed two chaperones for every like 10 people. Right. And also uh, support staff in the school, making sure the school has enough resources mm -hmm. to provide a healthy learning space, uh, making sure that uh, there's updated technology and gear, but also at the same time, too, benefits for the teachers so that you know they can earn a living in the city and live in the city because one of the problems in the city of chicago is that it's really expensive to live here i mean you got people working two or three jobs just to make ends meet and one thing that stood out is uh one of the speakers was saying no teacher should be living uh, should make a vow of poverty or, or close to poverty just to teach our uh, our students and you got you're hearing stories about you know teachers living in this on a small apartment building uh -huh. designed for one person but you got three teachers living in the same building just so that they can live in the city and then go to work. I mean, come on. Live in the city, go to work, and then go to their bar bartending job at night. Absolutely. Right? And, and, and again, think about it. They are teaching the next generation. So Mayor Lightfoot um, and to the city council, uh, heads up, CTU is not going anywhere. They're motivated. Senator Bernie Sanders, a progressive who's been consistent on his entire voting record, motivated these people to push forward because, look, Bernie Sanders isn't going to be around forever. So everyone, it's our responsibility to push forward. And Mayor Lightfoot, you need to listen to these people. You need to listen to CTU and SEIU Local 73 because there's something very wrong with how the Chicago education system is set up. And I think it's long overdue that they're given the resources. Look, Chicago's not broke. Please read the book, you know. There we go. It's a, it's it's a surprising book, and it's a it's a great and very easy read. Absolutely, I agree. But um, now moving on to another story. Before we do, yes, uh, a very important chat I see from Schultz one hundred. Nice to see Kit and Kira delivering the news again, but they're too far apart. LOL. I like it better <laughs> when they're both in the same frame. Oh well, I'll get used to it. Shoulder to shoulder. I know we're we're not fighting everyone. We liked it better that way too. Let's leave this studio. We hate it. <laughs> 
And Daniel's <laughs> As Daniel like, throws his arms up. And Daniel's like, I'm trying. I'm trying, guys. <laughs> I'm doing the best. 